So now I'll show you how to bind off in the round. Um, I'm gonna be starting just from this kind of arbitrary point because I'm not really knitting a pattern here that has a start and stop. This is just the lining to a hat that I'm making. So let's say this is, you've just finished the end of your round and now you're on the bind off round. There's two different kinds of bind offs that you can do. If you're gonna do the standard bind off, you need to get two stitches onto your right hand needle. Now, of course, because you're knitting in the round, you never have a completely empty needle on the right side. So we're just going to ignore these stitches on back. Pretend like we're starting from a brand new needle here. This is the only confusing thing about binding off in the round is that like, where do you start and stop your bind off? If you're doing a pattern that specifically tells you, you know, finish round number whatever and then bind off, then it's pretty easy. Um, so you would move the marker if you were using a marker and knit two stitches. And then with the tip of the left hand needle, I grab the first stitch that you knit, which can also be thought of as the lower stitch. Remember, we're ignoring all those. So we've got two stitches on our needle. The one that's lower or further away from the point, or first, however you want to think about it, I grab it, I slide it up and over the second stitch, and then let it fall off. So I'll show you again. This time you will need to knit one stitch because the goal is to have two stitches on your right hand needle. Grab the underneath stitch for the first stitch, bring it over the top stitch or the second stitch, and notice I'm not letting the top stitch drop I'm keeping it on there, which now becomes the bottom stitch. Knit one. Now I've got two on my right hand needle. Grab the bottom stitch, bring it up and over the tip of the needle, drop it off, managing to not drop this stitch. So this is a standard bind off, which is great, it's decorative, it's strong, and if you can remind yourself to not bind off too tightly, it's suitably stretchy. Um, I'm gonna do a few that are nice and loose here. If you find your bind off getting too tight, you could slip all your stitches to a bigger needle and bind off with that bigger needle, but you can see that that makes a nice ridge. However, if you're doing something that needs to be really, really stretchy or you'll never get it on your body, um, like if you've knit a sweater from the bottom up and the neckline is your bind off, you need to make sure it gets over your head. Or if you're knitting a sock from the toe up and you need to make sure that the cuff is stretchy enough to fit over your heel, then you can do a super stretchy bind off, um, which looks like this. Knit two stitches together and slip it back onto the left hand needle. Knit two stitches together and slip it back onto the left hand needle. Knit two stitches together, slip it back onto the left hand needle and continue on like that. For whatever reason, this creates a really stretchy bind off that has much more give to it and um, you can feel confident that that will stretch and fit over whatever body part you're trying to fit it over. So standard bind off, stretchy bind off um, in the round you wouldn't be switching between methods in the middle, so you wouldn't have that little extra one. And when you get all the way around, you'll have uh, eventually two stitches left. If you're doing the stretchy bind off, you'll knit them together. Um, you'll have nothing to pass it back onto the left hand needle for, so you will cut your yarn and draw it through the last needle, or the last loop. If you're doing a normal, a standard bind off, again, you'll have one loop left. You'll cut the yarn and bring it through the loop. And if you want to see that in close up, you can watch our video on how to bind off. Mm -hmm.